In Psalm 63 says, O God, thou art our God, early will we seek thee. Our souls thirst for thee. Our flesh longs after thee, as in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see your power and your glory, as we've seen thee in the sanctuary. For your loving kindness or your mercy is better than life. Our lips will bless thee. Thus will we bless thee while we live. Our souls shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. Our mouths shall praise you with joyful lips. When we think upon you on our beds and meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have been our help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings will we rejoice. What's in the shadow of his wings? The throne, mercy, and truth. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings will we rejoice. Our souls follow hard after thee. Your right hand upholdeth thee. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the sanctuary that you have prepared for us. Thank you, Jesus, for establishing it in your blood. Thank you for teaching us how to abide in you and you in us. Lord, that we may be filled with all the fullness of you. That you would possess our reins, our consciousness. Lord, we just thank you for fresh revelation tonight. That there would be a synergy among us to bring forth greater revelation. That we would all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we would henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, who in cunning craftiness lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him who is the head, even Christ. you, Father, for your goodness. Amen. I sit in there in that Psalm 63, I actually realized as I was quoting it, I missed, missed a verse where it says, I will lift up my hands in your name. He says, your loving kindness is better than life, the King James says, but it's It's the same Hebrew word that's used to translate mercy, chesed. Your mercy is better than life. My lips will bless thee. I will lift up my hands in your name. See, what's in his name? (laughs) Mercy and truth. He says, under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. That's the throne. That's where mercy and truth meet together. So you see these things all through David. <laughs> mercy and truth. In pictures and pictures and how he saw it <clears throat> to be in his name. To abide in him. To abide in the tabernacle of David. As it says in Isaiah 16, 5, In mercy the throne is established, and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David. Judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. I think I'm going to pick, off, pick up where uh, 
I taught Sunday at Glory and and um, the title was what was the title? Uh, <laughs> um, did you up there, Kathy? One with the power of the tongue? No. Oh, death and life? No. No. 719. The Fellowship of the Secret Place. <laughs> so we'll call this... I need my own. The Fellowship of the Secret Place Part 2. So it's kind of a challenge for me to, to teach or preach on a Sunday because to try and bring people into the depth of this revelation in an hour or so is a real challenge. And, you know, it's one thing when you've been bringing people into that revelation. It's another thing when you, when people have no grid and you're trying to... <laughs> so I just totally trust him. I don't, you know... But it's 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 a challenge, um, because it's a revelation. I, I don't want to tickle people's ears. You know, we don't need more knowledge. You know, um, and just like the stuff that Michael Danforth shared last week, it's a revelation. You know, it's a revelation that he was bringing forth, and if we don't step into that revelation, we'll never experience the reality. You know, the reality is in the revelation, you know, not in our head knowledge of all these different things. And, and certainly that's part of putting the pieces together, the knowledge, but so many times we hear those things and they just tickle our ears and we don't press into it. And so we never experience the reality. So we are, the rea- there is a reality that we're in the throne. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but yet... We have to step into that revelation by faith to experience that reality. And so the throne is is established in mercy and we sit upon it in truth. So we have to, so you could say God's, the Father's reality is It's allotting lines, it's inheritance lines are surrounded by the truth. And so his reality is within the bounds of his truth. He makes a boundary for himself. He lives within the bounds of truth. That's who he is. And when we live outside of the bounds of that truth, we don't live fully in that reality. We create our own reality within the lies and all the things that we think. Not until... Our our tongue comes into agreement with the truth and our actions begin to come into agreement with the truth. Do we truly begin to experience the reality? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Not like maybe. (laughs) That's the reality. But we have to come fully within the bounds of in those allotting lines, and that's what what David talks about in Psalm 16. Your lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. He's talking about allotting lines, inheritance lines. It is our inheritance. The throne is our inheritance. As it says in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 12, a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. As it says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, uh, verse like 8 or 9, where Hannah delivers the prophetic word as she's offering up Samuel. It says, I will set them with princes, princes of my people, and they shall inherit the throne of glory. but not everybody's going to step into that reality. It was purchased through Christ, but we have to step into the revelation and there is a price to pay in that intimacy. (laughs) The price is intimacy. The price is 
he paid the price, but yet we have to be diligent. We have to capture our imagination to step into that reality. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace. Peace, peace. Jesus is peace, peace. Whose mind, Isaiah 26.3, that word mind is the Hebrew yetzar. It's imagination. Thou wilt keep him in peace, peace, whose imagination is stayed on thee. And that's the battleground. That's the battle. That is the battle. To come into this reality. And of course that's the enemy's battle. All the distractions, all the electronic gadgets and entertainment and everything else is to keep us from lifting up our heads and looking up and only beholding Him. Anything that we behold outside of Christ is vanity. But whatever we see through him is the reality. And so when we behold ourselves outside of his mercy and self-righteousness and justifying ourselves, defending ourselves, we're living in a a reality (laughs) that's outside of him. But when we fully, when we're just beholding his mercy and us in him, we begin to enter into that reality. And just as, so we have to behold these two things, mercy and truth. In order to enter that rest, right? Yes, yeah, so that is the rest for our souls. Yeah. And that's what David says in Psalm 116. Return unto thy rest, O my soul. I've been saying that to myself regularly. Return unto You know, David would talk to his soul. Soul, rejoice. Soul, glory. And the Lord. That is our rest. That is the rest that remains to the people of God. There is that place where truly he he brings it all, right? Seek ye first the kingdom and all these things shall be added unto you. That is a reality when we enter into that rest. And we totally trust Him. And I truly believe once we step into that, then there's no longer that that effort. It's not like we have to fight. But we have something to overcome now to get into that place. To break through this consciousness barrier that has been brought up against us by the enemy and constantly be throwing upon us by him throwing thoughts and things at our mind constantly. No, this is who you are. This is who you are. Coming through our own thoughts. That constant assault to keep us from setting it and stepping into that reality, into that rest. There remains the rest of the people of God. And of course, David said that, return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. That was right after he had proclaimed the name of the Lord in Psalm 116. He says, the Lord is gracious and righteous. Yea, our God is full of compassion. There's the first two elements of his name, compassionate and gracious. And then he says, the Lord preserveth the simple. And in David, what does David say? What preserves him? mercy and truth. David would say, oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve me. So whenever you see that, David saying, preserve me, he's talking about mercy and truth. He begins Psalm 16 by saying, preserve me, oh God. He's talking about mercy and truth. Saying, this is the place of my rest. Prepare mercy and truth which may preserve the king, that says in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 28. 
So it is the hiding place, the secret place, the pavilion under the shadow of his wings. Where we are hid in Christ. Our identity is is in him, fully in him. So the fellowship of the secret place in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7, it says that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. And that word mystery comes from the Greek musterion, it means secret. We speak the wisdom of God in a secret. The hidden, which God ordained before the foundation of the world for our glory. He ordained this secret, this hidden thing before the foundation of the world for our glory. Where is the glory? (laughs) It's in the secret place. That's where his glory is. That's what Psalm 85 verse 9, the second part says, that glory may dwell in our land, mercy and truth have met together. That's where the fullness of the glory is. Christ in you, the hope of glory. When does that become a reality? When we're abiding in him and him in us. Where mercy and truth meet together. The glory is that reality. Where we become filled all in all with him. If your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. That is the redemption of the body. But we speak the God, the mission, we speak <clears throat> wisdom in a mystery, a secret, the hidden, which God hath before the foundation of the world ordained for our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. This is why it had to be a secret. As it is written, he's, Paul's here paraphrasing out of Isaiah chapter 64 where it says, Man has not heard nor perceived with the ear, neither has eye seen. See, he's talking about a hidden thing. Neither has eye seen, O God, beside thee, what thou hast prepared for those that waiteth for thee. The Isaiah 64 says, Paul says that love you. If you're waiting for him, you love him, right? So he's talking about a hidden thing. How amazing this thing is. Man has not heard nor perceived with the ear, and seen what thou hast prepared for them that wait for thee. But he has revealed them. That word revealed is the Greek word apokalupsis. Apa means away from, is the Greek preposition away from. Kalupsis or kalupto means covering or veil, removing the veil. It was something covered and hidden. But now he has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. See, it's not a surface understanding just by reading the word. The spirit has to give the revelation of this hidden thing. And Paul, once again, he's paraphrasing out of Daniel 2.22, where it says he searches the deep deep, and secret things. Daniel 2.22. He searches the deep and secret things. So this whole thing about the secret place and this fellowship there, us in him, him in us, and out of the throne room, that we would, we would all come into this throne room and express the full image of Christ, that there would be thousands and millions of Christ. The enemy couldn't know that, or he never would have crucified the Lord of glory. So it couldn't be a thing 
that the natural man can grasp by reading the word. And of course, Lucifer does not have the mind of God. <laughs> so he could not, he could search the scriptures and he can see things on the surface which even natural man can understand. But this was hidden. And so this is why so very few people have found the secret place, truly. Truly coming to maturity in Christ and walking just as Christ walked. How many people have you run into that have walked just as he walked? <laughs> but that is the revelation he's bringing forth now for our glory. Which none of the princes of the world knew, for had they known it, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. For what man, for what man knows the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even the things of God knows no man, save the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, so that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So we got to go deep to get what those things are. And it's the Spirit that reveals them. But we have to engage the Spirit, right? By meditating on His Word, by setting our hearts and our affections towards Him. And then verse 14 says, For the natural man receiveth not the things of God, the deep things. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So much of what you hear in pulpits is just surface knowledge. It has very little revelation. And any you have all kinds of intellectual people that can bring all kinds of knowledge and history and all these things, and it's amazing, but it's not very life-giving. <laughs> Because the life is in the intimacy. All my life, nobody has told me how to be intimate with the Lord. I mean, it's, it's astounding to me. All of what Christianity should be about in intimacy, and you hear almost nothing about it. It's just, it's mind-blowing to me. Because it can't be revealed through the natural mind. And no matter how intellectual, <laughs> it's foolishness with the wisdom of man. But he is calling us into this place and he's going to bring forth a revelation where all those that are desiring can enter into it. And he's going to make it to where those that want it can enter in. He's going to make it very clear. Hey, yeah. Sorry, that reminds me of an iceberg. I don't know when you were talking, uh, I was just seeing the iceberg, like how mm, it was it hidden underneath the look from afar mm. and just see the surface thing. Wow. But then those who are who want to take that risk to dive in. Yeah. Yeah. Go into the deep things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this revelation is so much bigger than I'm just like blah. I mean it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This one of my favorite chapters. Yeah. And but so I'm glad you're teaching on it. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's so much stuff in there I haven't even yeah. <laughs> so let's jump over to Ephesians chapter two, verse eight. And Ephesians is talking about the heavenlies all the way through Ephesians. It's talking about the throne, you know, the heavenly places. So that's the sphere of Ephesians is, is talking about this high calling, the throne room. Of course, Ephesians chapter 1, you know, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. According as he's chosen us in him, in him, abiding in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. Without blame is righteousness. Holiness and righteousness before him. Before the Father's face. And love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. It's the Greek word huiathesia. Having predestinated us unto sonship. Mature sons that look just like Christ. Of 
course, Ephesians chapter 2 says that we were raised together with Christ and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us. So Ephesians is, is talking about the heavenly realms. That is the high calling that Paul talks about in Philippians. Is the throne. The high calling is the throne. It's not like I'm waiting to die and get to heaven. I've never thought like that. I just never have. I've never thought about what's it going to be like when I get to heaven. I just never have. It's all, I've, I just got to know him, you know? The intimacy. And so then we get to Ephesians chapter 3. You know, it's hard to pick up here in Ephesians 3 because everything is a transitional. Every sentence is a transition all the way back really to chapter 1. So Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 says, um, Paul says, But unto me, who am the least of all the saints, is this grace given. This grace to reveal the mystery, the secret of Christ in you, the hope of glory. And really, Christ in you, the hope of glory, that is manifested out of the secret place. That becomes a reality as we abide in the secret place. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so, unto me who in the least of all the saints is this grace given. Of course, that's just like the Father to do that, right? <laughs> to make the least of them. Or, or the one he showed this amazing grace to that was persecuting the church. That I should preach among the Gentiles or among the nations the unsearchable. It means untrackable, untraceable. See, it was hidden. And you couldn't trace it. You can't trace it from Genesis to Revelation. You just can't. By the natural mind. Only the Spirit can reveal it. And see, this is mercy and truth. It goes all the way back. Before the foundation of the world. But it can't be traced by the natural mind. To preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see How does it go? Lost what is the fellowship of the mystery or the fellowship of the secret? Now the King James here translates it fellowship from the Greek word koinonia. The NIV and a lot of modern translations translate it uh, stewardship or uh, administration or... Um, what other word do they use? Um, dispensation. Because they use a different Greek word, they're pulling from the mod, a more modern text, um, the critical Greek text, and they're using the Greek word oikonomia, which oikos means house, nomia means law, the law of the house or administration. So that's why the difference in the translation. But the King James has it right here. It should be fellowship, koinonia. And it proves out through the context. To make all men see, but see here's just like the enemy. This is the very truth here and right here. Let's throw something different in here. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, the fellowship of the secret. which hath been hid in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. And the NIV removes Jesus Christ there even. Yeah. Because, see, that's all part of the mystery. See, because mercy and truth, that's why all things were created through him, because he is mercy and truth. 
And that was the covenant he made with the Father before the foundation of the world, that he would come to perform the mercy promised to the fathers and that he would be, be that truth to where there could be this great exchange of the old man nature, the old sin man nature placed upon him and we would receive the new nature. And that's through this great exchange in mercy and truth. So that was that covenant he made with the Father before the foundation of the world. And so in creating all things, he saw through that. And you see this in Psalm 136, where David says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks in the Lord of lords for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy endures forever. See, he saw everything through that mercy. In, before he even created it, because he knew that there was going to be a fall And that all had to be in place before he created anything. So everything was seen through that. Was through that mercy. And through that truth, which was the very foundation of it, it was the the reality. See, it says in, in Job 33, verse 4, it says that the Spirit of God made me. The breath of the Almighty has given me life. See, Jesus said, my words are spirit. So it's kind of the boundaries of who we are in him is by the word of God. The spirit of God made me. The breath of the Almighty hath given me life. That's his, his grace and his, which flows through his mercy into me is, is the life-giving force. And so, when we come back into him, of course, we receive the word of God, right? And he breathes his grace into us and gives us life. He's bringing that more and more alive. I haven't totally laid hold of that whole thing, but that Hebrew word neshaman and that, but that just runs so deep because... (laughs) It's in the blood. That's the big thing about the blood. The Neshema is in the blood. Uh, So, um, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the secret, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now to the intent that now okay Paul saying to make this thing known to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenlies might be made known by the church that word by is the Greek word dia it's the Greek preposition dia where we get our word diameter which means a line passing through a sphere, so it's literally through, it means. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenlies might be made known through the church the manifold wisdom of God. Okay, who's the wisdom of God? Jesus says, it says in 1 Corinthians one twenty four that Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. So that to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in the heavenlies might be made known through the church the manifold. This word manifold in the Greek, it literally means infinitely diversified. See, he's infinitely diversified through all of us. It was the glory of the church that was to manifest this. Yes. Infinitely diversified through, to infinitely diversif- diversified Christ through us. Oh. 
as we abide in that secret place and he's manif- and he's manifested the manifold wisdom of God according to his eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Now, what's the next verse? <laughs> Through whom we have boldness and access with confidence. What's he talking about? To the throne, before the Father's face. Yeah. It's all about the throne. Through whom we have boldness and access with confidence through, through faith in him. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you. Paul was going through tribulations. Do you think that the enemy just let him just like release this? You know. (laughs) Faint not at my tribulations for you, which is for your glory. For this cause... For this cause, that we would manifest infinitely diversified Christ, that we would manifest to the principalities and the powers. For this cause, I bow my knee to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, from whom all heaven and earth is named. Is named. <laughs> Yahweh, Yahweh, El, compassionate, gracious, long suffering, abundant in mercy and truth, from whom all heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. What are the riches of his glory? Scripture. Does that pull scripture up for anybody? Colossians 1, 26, 27. The riches of the glory of his mystery of the secret, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. The riches of the glory is Christ in you. For this cause I bow my knee to the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, from whom all heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, Christ in you, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And how does that happen? If my word lives in you. We sit upon the throne in truth. That Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. David said in Psalm 116, I believed, therefore I spoke. And Paul quotes that in 1 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and says, We also believe, therefore, we having the same spirit of faith as it is written, we also believe, therefore, we speak. (laughs) Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, the head of all things. And that word speaking the truth, it's beyond just speaking. It's the, the Greek word literally means truthing it. So it's manifesting the truth. It's speaking it. It's living it. It's may grow up into him who is the head. Grow up into him. (laughs) That Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. That we being rooted and grounded. Mercy and truth rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints. This has been my cry for a long time, this section of scripture, to know this. you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints 
what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. See, this is coming from David. Because mercy and truth is right here. Right in that section of scripture in Psalm 139, he says, your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me. It's mercy and truth. See, Paul's just giving it in reverse order. And so it's kind of like hidden. <laughs> like so many things. It's just like he didn't intend for this to fully come open until now. It's like they stepped into it then, but it wasn't yet even fully, you know. He was raising up the tabernacle of David, it says in Acts. But the enemy shut it down. <clears throat> and it was lost. And so we go to <clears throat> Psalm 139, where David says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence or from your face? The face of mercy. See, it's his spirit of truth and the mercy. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your face? If I ascend into heaven, you are there, the height. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. There's the depth. If I take up the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand mercy shall lead me your right hand truth shall hold me there's the length if I say surely darkness shall cover me even night shall be light about me hmm. just think about that you know <laughs> if I say surely darkness shall cover me even night shall be light about me he's talking about a consciousness yes. Even night shall be light about me. Yea, darkness hideth not from thee, for night shines as day. For darkness and light are both alike unto thee. For you have possessed my reins, my consciousness. But what did he say before he started all that? He said, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. And of course, Paul says to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. It all comes through this key of David, which is a revelation in the Father's name. See, this is the love of Christ. And what did Jesus say in John chapter 17, verse 26? He says, I have declared unto them your name and will declare it that the love of wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. This love is in the revelation of his name. Because the revelation of his goodness is in this name. The secret place is in this name. The key to abiding in him and him in us is in this name. Does that mean that, that without the revelation of this, somebody couldn't step into it? No, I think, you know, I think Lord can teach somebody how to abide in him and, and Christ in them, you know, in their own way. But at the same time, we're talking about bringing this forth to where anybody desiring to step into this can come into it. Not me reading Madam Guyon and trying to understand what she's saying, how she entered into it. <laughs> Because it's not easy. I've read that book. You know, I understand a lot more than I did 10, 15 years ago, but. It takes several times to, you know, you start it and then you don't. You yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, and she was a nun. So she was, you know, or whatever she was. You know, she was in the little convent, you know, and. They didn't have a lot of stuff we have now, you know. 
so um, but he's bringing forth the revelation so that we can all enter into it but that doesn't mean there's not going to be a, a you know that we have to be totally set apart that I mean we shouldn't be surprised by that there's only one way <laughs> gather my people together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I mean, wholeheartedness. There can't, we can't be half-heartedly seeking the secret place. There's, there's just no such thing. <laughs> can't have it both ways. <laughs> Either you're one with him or you're, or I cannot be divided. You know, that's Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is there shall your heart be also. The King James says the, um, the light is actually the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye be single, clear focus just on him, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye be evil, divided, your whole body shall be full of darkness. That sounds like the glory, doesn't your whole body full of light? <laughs> that was Jesus, right? A single eye. You know, it just astounds me. People read these books about, uh, uh, who is that old guy that would kick people on the, you know, Punch him. Smith Wigglesworth. They read about him and how he would sit, he wouldn't even allow a newspaper into his house. But he walked in an amazing place of intimacy, didn't he? I mean, I've never even read this stuff. I've just heard what people say about it. You know, that he was praying in this place and people couldn't stand to pray there anymore because, you know, the presence grew so strong they had to leave. And he would just be there, you know. He wouldn't allow a newspaper in his house. Maybe that should be a clue, <laughs> you know. I is single. You know, I doubt he would have watched TV. Even Brandon used to be in the barn. Yeah. Not in the bush. It's like, are we just entertained by these things? We think these anointings are just going to fall on us, you know. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's... Interesting. Well, it's like we shouldn't. <laughs> if your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. You cannot serve God and mammon. For you will love the one and hate the other, or you'll hold fast to the one and despise the other. It's a reality. That's a reality, but that will keep him in peace, peace, whose imagination is stayed on thee. I beheld the Lord always before my face. David said, I meditate on his word day and night, his truth. I don't know about you guys, but I want to be a forerunner and be one of the first ones to step into this, you know? And that's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. He's going to have forerunners that step into this and cast up the highway, as it says in Isaiah chapter um, 62. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, the highway of holiness. Gather Mm -hmm. out the stones, the stumbling stones. Lift up a standard for the people. 
Who's the standard? Jesus. Jesus. See you, see him. For the Lord hath proclaimed to the ends of the earth, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh, and his reward is with him, and his work is before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord sought out. And thou shalt be called sought out, a city not forsaken. But see, there's a people that go forth first and prepare that way. And that's what the Huya sons, the mature sons, are going to do. And that's what Revelation chapter 12 shows us. That the woman birthing the man-child, who is to rule all nations with a rod of iron, who is caught up to the throne. And the woman is led into the wilderness where they shall feed her. The sons shall feed her, bring her into that place. But he says, come, my people, enter into the chambers, the secret chambers. Shut the doors about thee. Hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be passed. There is an urgency to get to there. I'm really not motivated by what's coming. I mean, I've been motivated just to get there, just to know him. I haven't had to be motivated because I know stuff's coming, but he has impressed the urgency, that's for sure. And today, will we heed his voice? Will we hear his voice? Or will we harden our hearts? Anytime we don't heed his voice, our hearts are hardened. He doesn't harden our hearts. They're hardened when we don't heed his voice. (laughs) And so I can't control this revelation coming forth. He releases it as as he chooses it. You know, I've just given myself wholly to it for especially the last three or four years. But he releases it as he wants to do it. And he's going to have it there in just the right time. I just know it. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. yeah, As we can step into it. and Some days it's like this total feast, you know, like at a buffet table, just like, ah! But then your mind can only handle so much, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Gives you a little reprieve and, <laughs> and step into it. And, but we got to step into it. We got to, we will sit upon it in truth. That's a real battle. Even as, as we were driving over here, you know, Madonna might say something, Watch, see that car up there? You know, telling me how to, you know. And, you know, some stuff would rise up every night, little attitudes. And I was just, okay, okay, I got it. How do I walk this out? You know, thank you for the grace, Lord. That's not me. You know, Christ doesn't respond like that, does he? You know, and uh, every one of those things, the grace is there for it. But we become so accustomed to thinking that this old man is is okay, mm-hmm. it's not. None of those attitudes are okay. It's it's all old man. It's it's dead. It's yeah. dead. Died a long time ago. Like to keep but it's just been so in our mindset, and then what the enemy, of course, is constantly feeding us. I just don't. What's been taught too? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's been preached out of the pulpits forever. You know, I'm not Christ. This is the pastor speaking. Like you expect, you know. I'm just human. I don't, a, I don't really like it. You know, that. see, that's the spirit of religion. We are human beings, but I don't... It's even but in the music, though. It's, it's the lie. Yeah. Well, then people are trying to live out of two men. Yeah. You know, instead of the other one, the old one being dead, then... Mm-hmm. So you end up having, like, this split personality, and, you know, that's not God. That's not Jesus. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking like we said to the That's right. Amen. So if if we actually continue on there in Ephesians, um, let's jump to Ephesians chapter 4. Well, let's see, where do we want to go? Uh, yeah, let's go to like 4.11. He's gave, given unto us uh, apostles, prophets, Pastor Evangelist teaches for the perfecting of the saints, 
for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith. That word unity literally means oneness. I like that a lot more. Oneness of the faith and of the knowledge. That word knowledge is the Greek word epigonosko. It's not just gnosko, intimate knowledge, but it's epi. It's a higher. It's like to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. It's talking about awareness. So we all come to the knowledge, this awareness, this consciousness of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth, henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men who in cunning craftiness lie and wait to, to deceive, but speaking the truth in love. It's just it's, that speaking the truth is a single Greek word. It's just, there's no true English equivalent. It's like truthing it. Of course, speaking is part of that. But it's, it's more than just speaking it. Because you can just practice just speaking it, and that's not enough. <laughs> wow. Truthing it in love may grow up into him who is the head. Because we have to come in to the boundaries of his reality. And his reality is within the boundaries of truth. And as long as we hold fast to lies of this old man and do not fully embrace that our old man is dead in the mercy and do not fully embrace the truth and we're defending that old rotten flesh, we cannot fully enter into that reality. That's kind of the barrier there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's we have to break through and fully embrace the truth and be diligent. You know, we're so lazy in the Western world with our minds Mm -hmm. and casting down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every thought and imagination that will keep in peace whose imagination is stayed on thee. When they knew God, they glorified not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. imaginations, And their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory into an image made like corruptible man. That's Romans 1, I think 20 and following, but... um, And so let's. Um, so, uh, now, yeah. Does that mean that all? I mean the uh, the fivefold ministry. Like if I read um, verse the verse uh, four eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Does that mean that we all they all need to teach the same thing so that we can come to that same truth? Yeah. There's a oneness in it. So okay. okay so Jesus. Fulfilled mercy. He performed the mercy. He ascended to the right hand of the Father. And then, what did he pour out? Apostle. Apostle. Prophet. What does the prophet do? He points. There's the right. Evangelist, pastor, teacher. See, there's the right hand. This is the hand of truth. Spirit of truth. So the spirit of truth is to be brought forth through them. Obviously, they all bring a... a, a, But it's a synergy that's supposed to happen. And I believe it is. it is. It is beginning to happen. We just have to be careful what voices we're listening to. But uh, I think all the voices, true voices are pointing to the throne right now. Every one of the people we've had in, they've all pointed to the throne in some way. Michael Danforth, that's all he talked about was the throne room. Mm-hmm. Terry Bennett, the throne room. Bring the throne to bear. Um, Paul Keith Davis was talking about throne room and um, and Randy Demain a little bit. He brought forth John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. That's the throne. So, And that's all the revelation he's given me since September. It all, this whole revelation of mercy and truth shifted to the throne. 
after the fall feasts. Um, dramatically shifted right after the fall feast. Um, and it's all become out of the throne room since then, which I didn't recognize it there. All this thing about his name and everything, that was all revealed in the beginning of this year. Mercy and truth brought into his name. And Isaiah 16, 5, and mercy, the throne is established. He shall sit upon it. truth. All that stuff has come since, since then. Um, so much more clarity. So let's go to Ephesians chapter, um, oh, what verse is it? Maybe uh, verse 18 or something. Um, Uh, what's what's their understanding darkening? Yeah, what's the verse right before that? This I say therefore. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, other nations walk, in the vanity of their mind. So just think about that. Whenever we behold things outside of Christ, it's it's vanity. Mm-hmm. Having their understanding darkened, that word understanding is the Greek word cardia, where we get cardiac. It's heart. Having their hearts darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance, literally means unknowingness that is in them. So we're not supposed to be like, means we can be like this. Being alienated from the life. See, that's the reality, right? The ignorance that is in them. Through the blindness of their hearts. Who being past feeling, meaning a hardened heart, have given themselves over to lasciviousness or, or excess of uncleanness. It says, but you have not so learned Christ. If you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the King James says, which isn't a very good translation. It should be conduct. Put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, or the lusts that come from lies desires that are rooted in lies. Corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which after God is created. So after God, what's it talking about? Yes. Yes. It's pointing back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. See, actually, I believe that that didn't fully happen in Genesis. That was their plan to see man fully come into that. But Adam and Eve didn't fully come into that because there was a development of character that had to happen. That was their plan. Let us make man in our image. And truly, that didn't happen until the person of Jesus Christ and all those that come into him, truly, as that abide in him, that say, ah, oh, that's what we, from the foundation of the world, that is what, our, what we had. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which after God, which after his image and likeness, is created in righteousness and true holiness, the King James says, but the Greek literally reads, righteousness and holiness of or from the truth. See, righteousness and holiness go before his face. And that comes out of mercy and truth. Luke chapter 1 says that um, that we may stand before him without fear in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. So that's what's required to stand before him. Righteousness and holiness. Well, righteousness comes from the mercy, of course. Holiness 
the truth, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Righteousness and holiness all the days um, of the truth. And then he says, what's the next verse? I'm lost. Um, <laughs> 25 maybe? <laughs> I, was, I was down the page. Therefore putting away lying. Okay, okay, so then the next verse says, therefore putting away lying. The, the Greek is literally, therefore putting away lying. The lie. Big difference. Mm -hmm. What is the lie? Self. The self will. The old man. Therefore putting away the lie. Speak ye truth. Every man with his neighbor. So, okay, here again. Think about what speaking the truth is. It's Christ, right? And it's not just the tongue. It's not just what we say. It's, it's a life expressing Him. Speak ye truth for, man one, for we are members one in another. We're to bring, we're help bringing each other up. We're speaking the truth of who your true identity is and, and helping each other come into this revelation of the one new man. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. The devil is a thief. He is the thief. Literally the Greek reads, let the one thieving thieve no more but rather let labor working with his hands that which is good, that he may have good, have to give good to him that has need. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that may minister grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You know, Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. Whom Sarah sins, you remit, they are remitted. John chapter 20, verse, what, 21? So if we're not remitting those sins, we're grieving the Spirit. And there's that whole context, right? Be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Or we're grieving this Spirit. It's the Spirit of Christ in us. And what's that about? It's about remitting sins, right? about redeeming mankind back to the Father. And of course it goes on and talks about us being children of our Father and laying down our lives just as Christ laid down His life and offering a sweet-smelling sacrifice. So, Father, may we be that sacrifice. Lord, together that we may come into this. Thank you for bringing us into the revelation of how to abide in you, Father, and you and us. That we may behold your face in righteousness. We will be satisfied when we awaken with your likeness. Thank you for that great hope. We thank you for acceleration, Father. As you say in Isaiah that, I think it's Isaiah 59, that you will hasten it in its time. I thank you, Father, that you are hastening your work, the work of your hands in us, Father. So, Father, we give you thanks. May we abide in thanksgiving before you as David compassed the altar with thanksgiving.
quicken our understanding, Father. Thank you for bringing it to simplicity, that we can all walk it out in our own ways, that we can teach one another how to walk it out. In Jesus' name, amen.